Hello. <laughs> we we got to get in our place there. Well, Susan, we always like to do these programs because love grows in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. You like me in the kitchen, and I like to be with you yeah, in the kitchen. Sometimes we work together in the kitchen more now that we're empty nesters than when we had a bunch. Oh of, yeah, when we had our children. Yeah. you were busy working then. And I've actually learned You're from still you. Working, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've actually learned a lot of it, being around you in the kitchen and learned the, a few of the techniques. Yeah, and you make a great breakfast. Oh, and one time you're going to make your guacamole. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll he show. makes the best <laughs> guacamole you've ever, ever had. Yeah, if you want guacamole, you can come to our house one day. Yeah. But Susan, uh, anyway, it's, a, it's it's just a pleasure here in Asensia. And you were asking me earlier, what does Asensia mean? Esencia is the same word in English and in Spanish, mm -hmm. except in Spanish, I guess it's a little more esencia, esencia. Uh, it's it, more romantic. Yeah, I guess you could say it's more <laughs> romantic. But the actual meaning, if you really research it, it's what uh, they do to abstract the beautiful aromas of roses. Wow. And, and it's getting to the depth of the of, of the uh, pebbles of roses and all the wow. different and that's kind of like marriage you yeah. know marriage gets to the depth of love in marriages and so the fragrance of God's love can and I also it. see it as the word of God you know when when you get in Christ you get the essence of life that's you beautiful. know and the word of God does that yeah but before we go any further you're going to show us a really one this is one of my funnest things that we do around the holidays. It's so simple, isn't it? It's called, it's kind of neat. It's called, my mother always made it, but it's called five cup fruit salad. And so I'm gonna, when I make this for our family, I usually make five cups of everything, <laughs> cause you know, to feed everybody. But net, today I'm just going to make two cups. And so the, the most important thing in this is to drain the fruit because it calls for a can of the mandarin oranges and a can of the pineapple chunks. And I've learned, I've been, we put this out to drain this morning. So it's been, I usually, if I make it for a holiday, I put it in this in the morning. And then this, if we're going to eat it too, I let it drain. This is one of those things that you say, yeah, it doesn't make a difference, but it does. But anyway. It does because it'll get runny Yeah. if you don't uh, melt it. So, I mean, let it drain. So I'm going to add two cups of everything instead of one cup. But the yeah. consistency, and this is exactly two cups. The cons you know, the, the, um, the amount is kind of neat because it's a cup of, of everything. And you can remember that. So if you want to double it, then you put two cups of everything. Okay. And see, that those are so drained. There's no juice in there. <laughs> and then it is also two cups, going to be two cups of coconut. You just buy this, uh, you know, at not, the The non-sugar kind, right? No, this is actually sweetened. It's sweetened a little yes, bit. Yes, okay. this is I don't... sweetened coconut. Okay. And so you put two, cup. two cups of this. Dos copas, por favor. See? Hay que aprenderlo. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's another. So I'm putting two cups of everything and then two cups of the miniature marshmallows. Two cups of miniature marshmallows. And this just makes a delicious fruit salad, Reuben. It's so good. Now, I didn't bring maraschino cherries, but if you want, you can drain the maraschino cherries. Yeah, and you want to put you want to put the chili the, not chili, the cherries. The my cherries. The, my kids love the cherries, but you can either just put some on the top or uh, you can mix them in. But you want to drain them because they're very red. Yeah. And they'll mix red all <laughs> all in there if you don't drain them. And then and this. And then a cup or two cups. Uh, of sour cream. And that's two cups? Yes, yeah. this is exactly two cups. Okay. Now, this is very important. I can all I can still hear my mother <laughs> telling me <laughs> to, to whip the sour cream. She would always tell me, I would wanna, you know, just put it on in there. I wouldn't wanna take the time to <laughs> She knows, I'm sure she knows. And she would tell me, No, Susan, you've got to whip the sour cream. Because it, what it does is it just fluffs it up. Okay. So you just want to put it in a 
in a little bowl or something. Okay. And really, you can almost just use a spoon to do it. Uh, it's going to make it lighter. It's going to, don't ask me what it does, but my mother said, don't forget to whip the sour cream. <laughs> it, it loosens it up so it's not as heavy. And, and you know, I even have... Your uh, mother you was, such, was such mother. a delight to have around. She always, she always had something to say and it was usually very good. <laughs> My so mom, you whip it my up, mom right? Really did things. I have to say, in excellence. Yes, she, she did. really did. She, she just liked everything done well. I remember, I still decorate my house at Christmas and in the table. If I'm going to have company or a birthday party, I decorate the table. Everything so nice, and I really got that from my mother. You know, Absolutely. not that you have to do that, but. That's just how she was. I'm gonna need that spoon. Okay. So now we're just gonna simply add the whipped. <laughs> if my mom's looking down from heaven, she'll say, oh good, she whipped the sour cream. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and so we're gonna add that. Very nice. And then she would also tell me this. She would say, be careful when you're whipping, when you're stirring it because you don't want to uh, break the fruit. <laughs> okay. You know, you don't want to just sit here and stir it. You want to keep sense. the fruit whole. Yeah. Gosh, that looks so good already. <laughs> yeah, it is a delicious fruit salad. And it's just so easy to remember and how to make it, for one thing. <laughs> you don't have to be looking at the recipe. Yeah. yeah. And you want to just be sure Reuben, that you mix it because the sour cream has to be mixed pretty well in there. Uh, you know, I've seen people use whipped cream, mm -hmm. you know, whipping cream that you like cool whip in this, but I prefer the sour cream. It yeah. just, it's doesn't, it's not as sweet or something. I like it just like this. Well, you know, as we get into the new year, Susan, I'm going to let you keep doing no, that. No, you go ahead. Yeah. But as we get into the new year, one of the things that uh, Susan and I uh, want to focus on, uh, of course, getting closer to the Lord. We showed you the triangle for those that remember about you getting closer to God and that makes you get closer to each other. And I want to encourage you all to, to do just a few things this coming year that might get your motors going again. Uh, one of them, of course, is reading the word, which we hear that all the time. Yeah. But I want to add a little twist to it. Don't overdo it. Sometimes we say, well, we're going to read five chapters a day. And in the day's busy world and the world we live in, five chapters is, becomes very difficult. So, but, but get something, whether it's a chapter a day, one in the new, one in the old, or, or maybe just the new for starters, and, and read it. And, but here's the twist. She reads the chapter, you read the chapter, and then you talk about it. And, and you talk about what it meant to you, what you saw in it. And you know what? It opens a whole other level. You get closer together. You know, I'm surprised when I read the Word. Mm -hmm. It just seems like without fail, if you keep reading it daily, they, the Holy Spirit just something, He'll bring something and He'll apply it to your personal situation. I'm always amazed. And he, it'll usually give you wisdom. That's right. About something that maybe you were thinking of and, and you'll and of get course, wisdom. And of course, there's certain essence, going back to our program, that come out to bless you as a couple and be ready for those. This last year for Susan and I, it's been grace, Lord. You know, we've, yes. we've received of His grace so much uh, and we live by grace and, and we receive it of His grace. And so when we read the scripture, we're always talking about what we see that. Another thing you can do that, and this is probably a little different, a little twist, find one purpose that both you and your wife uh, might like to do, want to do, and plan for it. For examples for us, and of course this is a little extravagant, but we were able to do it, we had the time, uh, is go to the capitals. Yes. And uh, we've we've visited uh, how many capitals now? About forty. Almost forty capitals, <laughs> and uh, we drive there, 
and we get to pray there, but we also learn the history of our states. And so we're connected. We're connected to Arizona and Nevada now. We, this year we even went to, we went to Sacramento. Yeah, beautiful and, Sacramento. And uh, we went through Death Valley. Oh my goodness. I said, this is a part of America I've never seen. Absolutely. But we enjoy a road trip and we like to pray and listen to books. And So find something that y'all, and maybe it's prayer walking. Uh, take a target of a neighborhood and say, we're just going to, or whatever it is, it may be something as, as simple that both of you love to do. Do it together and, and let the Lord grow in you. And then the, fast, the last thing is learn to listen to each other. Uh, most of the time uh, we have disagreements, it's because we're not listening to each other. And most of the time your wife just wants you to listen to her. And, and if you're and willing to- And vice versa. Yes, but the woman <laughs> talks four times more than the man, <laughs> we must confess. Uh, but but learning to listen to each other is about 50% of the issue. Mm -hmm. In other words, shut up and listen because out of that is her heart gets, uh, you know, filled that, oh, her husband loves her and spends time listening to her. And, and then, women really bond by, by conversation. That's right. Women bond with their husband by communicating. They love to communicate and... Um, Which brings us to this little baby thing here. Yeah. <laughs> Move our little, and oh, wait a second. I need to taste this before, so oh, I can be the right. first to taste it. Uh, let me grab a little nice spoon. Mmm. Is that okay? Did that turn out? It's very good. As always, <laughs> I always enjoy that. Susan, this little example is a little baby stool that I asked you to find it. And as y'all know, this is what many stools are made out. And it has three prongs or three legs. And each one of these legs is so important, isn't it, Susan? Because mm -hmm. if you take one leg off, what do you got? You got a won't nothing. Stand up. Won't stand up. So, Susan, I know you know them. What are the three things these legs can stand for? <laughs> okay, so the first one is commitment. Commitment. In your marriage, you have to be Commit to each other. Sometimes I hear people say, I'm done, I'm done. And I'm like, oh, don't say that, you're not done. That's right. You know, and uh, and even families kind of can break up because of hurts. And you just should always try to keep together. And 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 you have to be careful that you're not around people that, that uh, give up on marriages real quickly. Find books, find anything that encourages is your marriage. Don't don't listen to these lies that, you know, marriages are fall, gonna fall apart. No, no, no. So the first one is commitment. commitment. I love that. So, so that's what one of these is. Okay, yeah. we'll take them off and then we'll put them back on. Okay, okay. the next the one. The next one is uh, friendship. Friendship. Friendship so. is important. Just getting to know each other and trusting. I don't know, Ruben and I, we feel like we're best friends. Yep. That doesn't mean we don't have other friends. That's right. And, but but we just, we are friends and we stick together. And that doesn't mean we don't argue either <laughs> because sometimes we do, you know. But uh, anyway, friendship. And, and, and what, what I believe about friendship, friendship is, I mean, your best friend should be your wife. I mean, you shouldn't have to, you should never say, well, uh, I love my wife, but I've got to be with my friends or I have all these best friends that, that they're the most important thing. No, cero, don't, no hagas eso. <laughs> your best friend is your wife and you have to learn and both of you have to work at it because yeah. we're different. Men and women are different, but she needs to be my best friend. I like to travel with Susan. I like to say, well, let's do this together. We so like we try to find things that we can do together, like hiking. You know, we're trying to learn we can go hiking. We need to be hiking for, yeah. to stay in good health and find right. different things. And then also friends are, are intimate. It's so special to have somebody that you can totally reveal your heart to. Absolutely. And you know that they're committed to you. They're there for you. That's right. And we need that in our lives. We need to be able to empty ourselves and to be honest. Honesty is a, a big key. And, and be careful that you don't go to somebody else 
uh, with these deep things in your heart. But the person you need to go to is your husband or your wife. Yeah. And, and whether she gets it right away or he gets it mm -hmm. is not the issue. The issue is you're going mm -hmm. to the right source and with God's help, Y'all can come together and, and begin to resolve those things. Men that run to somebody else, is that's a danger zone. And, yeah. and, and we'll, we'll talk we've about that. We've counseled with, with couples before and, and we've said, what's going on? And they said, they said well, he has a best friend. <laughs> and that's a woman and and he stops by our house and I'm like what <laughs> I said if my husband had a, another woman for his best friend I'd be saying no you know and that's what happens I guess with in when the workplace oh, that yeah. can happen absolutely well Susan the third so the, the third last one, one not least <laughs> yeah. last but not least is passion, passion. romantic Passion. Sexual passion, Absolutely. God's way. God created us to be sexual yes. creatures. He created our bodies. He, cre I was thinking the other day of all the parts that are physical and romantic. You know, your hands to yeah. hold hands when you're walking. Your your arms to hug and get close to that person. Yes. And and physical touch is very important. And especially that can, that's some people's number one uh, and, love language. And, and you know, Susan, and this has been researched over and over, children that are, are left alone without being loved, I mean, babies, uh, they'll actually wither away. They are yes. made oh, yes. to be held, to be touched, to be spoken to. To, and that fills their little their little cup. Yeah. And so, but just take that in the, the greater scope of things. We need each other. And when you're married, uh, every effort should be to keep your passion alive, your love alive. And God and your, wants us to right. have all of these three uh, expressions. If you tell me, well, my wife's my best friend and I'm committed, but you don't have passion, then. But we sleep in separate rooms. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> that, that's that stool's not going to. No, hold that up. stool. You need uh, passion, and uh, and thank you, Susan, for finding this and little baby me, stool. And believe me, the enemy robs us. I don't. I think that couples don't. We don't live in the fullness of what God intended us Absolutely. to live in. And we have to work at it. Reuben and I work at it. You know, we don't, we yeah. want to have that. And so uh, we just. And of course, the next one is friendship, passion. And then the last one is commitment. And that makes a healthy stool in your life. So there's that. <laughs> Firmly standing on the rock of well, the one who created and designed marriage. As you start a new year, put some of these things in action in your life and uh, let the grace of God fill your marriages, your homes. Let God have his way in your homes. Thanks for joining us here in Essencia. God bless. Mm -hmm.